His words ring through your head as you lose consciousness. His words ring through your head as you lose consciousness. Mm. <gasps> no! <laughs> so apparently, <laughs> my reaction and Ash's reaction were so strong to that moment <laughs> that we peaked the audio so bad, we had to reset all the audio equipment, so that's why we had to, to make a cut there. But oh my gosh! Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where the scariest way to wake up in the morning is your six-year-old saying that he hears voice at six-year-old, no, six, at 6 a.m. in the morning with your three-year-old saying that he hears voices down in the kitchen, and there shouldn't be any voices down in the kitchen. That is scary. Like uh, father, like son. What, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me hearing voices as well. Yeah. Just voices all over the place. You know... All nighttime fears at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm able to like, yeah, no problem. You know, oh, it's all in our imagination. Whatever. Let me, you know, put you back to bed immediately. Like, no worries. He says that, and I'm like, oh no. He said the magic words. Like, I hope this doesn't train him to say this on a nightly basis. But I'm like, okay, we're gonna flip on every light. We're gonna check out everything. Make sure everything is safe. Okay, we're safe. And then he's still like, I'm still a little bit nervous. I'm like, okay. And so I, I, I stroke his back. And, and I, I do like a half-hearted trying to convince him that nothing's there, but he, he, tapped into, he tapped into that root fear that MatPat has. And so, like, I can, I can talk you through whatever other scary things exist, but he tapped into that one. So, woke up a little bit earlier, didn't sleep super well last night, because the night before he also did something like that. No, no, actually, sorry, the night before was... We, we have alarms in our house that, like, go off when a door gets open. Not alarms, like little buzzers or whatever. And a buzzer went off when Steph and I were upstairs, and it was, it was like, getting into the evening. And I'm like, and I went down, and I checked to make sure that everything was locked and whatever. But I don't know. So, so that's two nights in a row, Matt and Ash. I am scared. Are you, are you going to, do you want to sleep in the guest room and protect me? Yeah. Yeah, would you, Matt? That's in my job description. <laughs> it, it isn't. I, I, I do know your contract. That I, I will say that one's not. But it can be. I, w I wouldn't say no to the extra help. Kids are terrifying, dude. <laughs> Kids are so scary. The, the imaginations. Yeah. Kids, yeah. Well, a, anything a kid says is immediately eight times creepier. Oh, That's my gosh. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, growing up, like when he was a, a baby, right? You have the baby monitor and you have like the cameras and they have night vision nowadays. And literally it was like something out of a horror movie mm -hmm. where I saw him and when his eyes are open, you don't see the detail. You just see like the big like white like demon eyes or whatever. And one night... We hear sounds down the hall. We had played a horror game earlier in the in the day, and I hear you know him rustling around. I, I check the baby monitor, and the baby monitor is glitching out. And so not only is he like wide awake, bright, uh, wide open, like white eyes in this camera monitor, but he's also like glit because it's glitching. So he's doing these like unnatural movements, like a demon child in his crib. And I'm like, I've seen the omen enough times. I know where this is headed. Children of the corn, I'm out. Get out. No thanks. That sounds a lot like a game that we play pretty often on this channel. It's, yeah, it is. <laughs> Something glitching out on a camera feed. I know, right? Hmm. I, I'm like, I've done this rodeo before. <laughs> All my life has trained me for this moment. And what I've learned is GTFO. <laughs> no, nope, don't even try. My kid is possessed by a robot, animatronic, or demon spirit, or some combination thereof. Hard out. Hard out. There you go. See, GT Live, teaching you the important life skills. You guys, any uh, any scary night things? No, I sleep pretty no. good. Yeah, yeah, it's great on my end. <laughs> well, great. <laughs> Come to my house. Night terror is about. I have like a thousand roommates, though. So it's like... That helps. I'm, I'm fourth in the line of people getting murdered. <laughs> Yeah, have you, because again, this is me, and this, I, I didn't grow up scared of a lot of things, but for whatever reason, this was just like that childhood fear of mine. I would, 
like you say, you're fourth in line. Are you really though? Where is your where is your room positioned relative to the doors? I'm not giving my secrets away. Well, sure, smart, <laughs> smart man. To, he needs to maintain that three person buffer. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but well, and and I mean, go home tonight and seriously ask yourself that question though. Mm-hmm. Do you truly have that three person buffer? It's something I've thought about. Good, yeah. good, yes. Thank you. See, I appreciate that. That's yeah. that's we fourth. play too many horror games for me to not think about I know, that. Right? <laughs> it gets it at, at at some point, it, it, and it's funny too because like people, a lot of times I see you guys in the comments like, oh, my pet is so decent sensitized to the jump scares and, and i am largely i've been doing this for a long time but it seeps it like but it changes something fundamentally in the way that your brain thinks and it's like you know it, it, it gets you thinking mm-hmm. i've always i've always been kind of that sort of guy though where like my survival instinct is so strong that i want to think through all of that stuff and have a plan and can and contingency plan and contingency plan yeah because it helps you gotta gotta be prepared ash what about you what what order are you what defense mechanisms <laughs> See, you haven't thought about it. I, I mean, it's just me and then my roommate, so it could really go either way. Oh, it's a, it's a coin flip. Yeah. Okay. Well. So. Well. Yeah. But you know, the bug screen fell off of my oh. of my window. Oh, that's so scary in the middle so, of the night. Yeah, and then there was a bunch of ice, and it froze like under ice for a little bit. So that was kind of cool to look at. But like, if I need to hop out the window, there's not a bug screen. That's like an ash screen. Wait, a but. I'm, there was a lot of things that just happened there. Yeah. A bug screen uh, fell not, out of your window. I'm not clear on this either. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the the narrative went arc really of this story. And for me, it makes sense. It's, just <laughs> it's your lived reality. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So a bug screen yeah. fell out of your window. Okay. Yes, it fell outside, off the window. Outside? Yes. Okay. So and it's then on it the froze? outside. Yeah. So the, the one time it got cold this year to freeze? Yeah. Is it it's still frozen to this day? <laughs> it's not anymore, but I haven't that would have been odd. to pick it up. Um, the, the frozen thing was just a fun anecdote, and that's how I remember when it happened. Okay. Because it was the first, like, really cold um, yeah. night that we had, and yeah. then it froze immediately. And, and you have not replaced it in the multiple months since no, then? No, so it's still on the ground. Okay. <laughs> Great. And this relates to you dying how? Yeah, because the box screen was outside of the actual glass pane. Yes. So if I open the window, I can just hop out and not have to worry about a bug screen. I see. So the bug screen would have acted like an ash screen. But uh, now it doesn't. It's not an ash screen anymore. No. Right. It's just a it's, whoop. It's just on the dirt. Just a launch pad. Yeah. And it's a it's a landing zone. It gives you a place to land. Yeah. Land on the bug screen. <laughs> yep. That won't make a loud sound at all. <laughs> would it? I don't. I, I feel like a bug screen I don't would. Know. It might. Well, there's like, holes a little, in it, so there, there's clatter? a lot of give. So it actually would be. So quiet. really, it's a it's a really not good bug screen. <laughs> yeah. No. It it was more not... of a more of a bug entry point. Yeah, honestly. It was. It was a it was bug a landing bug strip. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm glad that we're able to share our trauma with each other. Hey, we're, today we're playing Lily's Well. Speaking of trauma, uh-huh. oh, nice. We have uh, Lily's Well, which uh, presumably is about a girl who is some weird experiment uh, done by her dad. Probably uh, that's. I mean, as we can tell. So last time we played this, we explored around. Our goal is to assemble a bunch of rope or rope-like things to descend down deeper, deeper, deeper into this well. Last time, uh, we got run over by a car. Yep. And we made it seven layers deep. Yep. And out of 15, I think it was, right? Seven mm-hmm. layers out of 15, which is not bad. Um, and then Lily forgot everything that we had read about, where it, we weren't supposed to touch the, like, purple vine, and she touched it, and she got her blood sucked out. So, yeah. So that's where we're at. Uh, things that we learned along the way is that we are dealing with different iterations of Lily, so version, I think we started at version 4 or 3, and now we're at version like 5 or something. Uh, so every time we die, we're getting a different version. So, again, leading to this idea of like she's an experiment, there is something weird going on. Um, and it's also, a per- it seems to be a somewhat persistent world where we moved a bunch of rocks into the river, and now the rocks just stay there so we can cross, which is nice from a gameplay standpoint. Um, so that's it. I guess we're just hopping into this, continuing to assemble rope, to descend into the well. Matt, anything I should know going into this? A um, couple things. Yes. Okay, great. Um, and actually, Ash can weigh on, in on this as well. Whoa! Cause... I got I got multiple people weighing in. Okay. Our, our poor friend Ash had to make up all of our lost save data. So Wait, did we lose our data? We did. Yeah. No! Uh, yeah, really? We did. We're having a hard time with that. Like, yeah, we are. But... I, don't worry not, though. I replicated literally every single move that you did. Every single one? I didn't want to mess anything up, Matt. Did you also, like, w- waste a lot of time on witty banter at the very beginning of your gameplay <laughs> session? Yeah, I sat here and talked to myself for a little bit. 
about like some random <laughs> random event. Probably your three year old at some point. Uh, uh-huh. yep, nice, yep. excellent. Also, RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. Oh yeah, certainly. I actually I heard that from the other room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah I like Willow being dubs. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, cool. good call. Yeah. Golden chocolate bar. Out of commission now, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, okay, so thank you, Ash, for recreating that. That's awesome. So we're starting exactly where we left off. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, My advice to you. Yes. So this game is huge. And there's huge. And a lot of detail put yes. into this game. Oh, man, you know how we do with detail and huge games. Many a lore. We, strug- we struggle. <laughs> struggle bus is real. Struggle bus leaving the station. <laughs> <laughs> well, this game is good because it wants you to struggle. Yes. Okay. You, you kind of want to die. So it's like the this is like the Dark Souls of indie eight bit <laughs> puzzle game. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's this is the Elden Ring. Oh my gosh! Can we talk about Elden Ring one day? I love Elden Ring. Okay. It's one of my favorite games of all time. You know, I know nothing about it. I, I will tell you everything about it <laughs> and more. It's it's my nightly obsession between the hours of midnight and two a.m. It is really bad for my sleep schedule, and yeah. then I get woken up at like five in the morning as my child is like there are people down in our kitchen so really i'm getting like three hours of sleep a night regularly at this point not great (laughs) well you look great thanks matt (laughs) that's really sweet of you um anyways you're gonna want to die because each death (laughs) okay sure beautiful Uh great i like Um, it uncovers more and more about uh who lily is and what she's doing okay Mm -hmm. so so even though i got to layer seven i should get the other layers yeah it's probably a good idea okay so i should just hop into the well just be like yolo well yeah yeah okay let's do it cool all right that sounds good uh continue current lily version seven okay version seven or a little bit more lilies have have perished than i expected um okay so if that's the case then i'm like you said i'm just gonna yolo into the well for Ooh, this is new seven flowers bloom on one vine looking at this makes your blood go cold can't take it. You don't really want to be around this plant for some reason. That's new. The fact that it's seven makes me think that... Because we got to layer seven last time. It was the source of the voice. All that can be heard now is the echoes of raindrops. If you wish to save the person in the well, you must construct a rope. Okay, so I, in, inky darkness. You hold zero pieces of the rope. Going in without a rope is unwise. Okay, so I need a rope. So we'll grab one thing and use it as a rope. So what's what's the easiest thing that we can grab as a rope? Um, what was an easy one that we can just use? Here's our knitting needles. Take. You can take something underneath it. Yes. In your search you found knitting needles. Yes. We took the knitting needles. Okay, great. So then we're gonna make our little yarn ball here. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna take this. Unravel in a long rope, take the ball of yarn as rope. No, I need to... What was this again? Shoot. I gotta remember how to operate. Now. Hey, you played this Can game escape, originally. Can escape? Is it escape? Mm-hmm. There it is. Thank you. Stuff. Stuff. Use knitting needles. Yes. You can probably knit the yarn, have stronger rope. Yes. Okay, I have knitted rope. Here we go. So we got one. I'm going to hop in with one. Use it to descend. Here we go. Whee! Is it just me or does it, does it look like she has like a little witch's hat? <laughs> a little blue all around her head? I don't know. It looks like a witch's hat to me right now. Rope has come to an end. The way down seems endless. No voices can be heard. Just the sound of your own breathing. Ooh. What's that sound? Sound of an old 8-bit sound chip. Sounds like, oh, no, oh, Lily, no, oh, cool, I mean, not cool that our, uh, our small girl died a horrific death, that's, that's definitely a bummer, but cool from a lore standpoint, oh, hmm, that's, that's, that's a bummer. That's, that's not great. Dead end! So we need more than one piece of rope, as we assumed. Cool. Okay, so two. Ash, you have these numbers. You're writing these down. Yes, I am. Great. So this is, uh, again, building up the phone number for the game. When determining between good and bad rope, it's possible to keep testing singular parts 
and seeing how they affect Lily in the well. Skip the intro, yes. Okay, so that was floor one. We get someone who clips us, so that's good to know. Uh, we're gonna take the knitting needles again. Take them again. Huh, so there's someone else here who wants to kill us? Was that our dad, do you think? Or who could it be? Was it like another version of Lily who's, who's it trying to It looked like Lily to me. You think it looked like Lily? Right. I, I couldn't really tell. It looked a bit like a hooded figure. Like the hood, I think, covered up a lot of the identity. Mm. I wasn't sure. Dark Lily. But this actually confirms what I was suspecting. So this seems to keep track of our deaths, progress. A singular flower is growing here. Looking at this makes your legs ache for some reason. Yeah, because we <laughs> fell down. 15 stories into a really deep well and shattered every bone in our body. You don't really want to be around this plant. Yeah. Okay, so these are keeping track of the endings we've gotten, it seems like. Which is really cool. Let's do this. Let's grab our shears. Large pair of shears. Okay, let's grab this guy. Take, Take the shears. Great. Don't run with them, though. As previous gameplay experiences have taught us, sometimes if you run with shears, the game will program in that you stab yourself to death. <laughs> That's a bummer when that happens. Um, I think this time, let's do this and our tire swing rope. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna use our stuff, we're gonna cut it. There we go, tire swing rope. So now we've got two. So this is great, like this is just us catching up to kind of where we were last time. I thought we wanted, we only had like one and done, and so it's like, let's get as far as we could. But if we get new information and new endings each time, this is absolutely worth dying a bunch of times. I feel bad for Lily, I gotta admit. Alright, so here we go. Here she goes, little witch hat. <laughs> I'm going down the well! That's, that's Lily as a witch. Oh, you know and we're stuck. You know what you sounded like? <laughs> the, the Lucky Charms Leprechaun. <laughs> Magically delicious. Hearts, stars, and horseshoes, clovers, and blue moons. <laughs> Pots of golden rainbow and the red balloons. <laughs> so then his hat became a thing. All right, is a red balloon really a lucky charm? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Right, but like, <laughs> horseshoe, I get. Lucky nah. horseshoe, that's a thing. Four-leaf clover, I get, absolutely. Blue moon, it's a rare occurrence, mm -hmm. but is it a lucky charm? Like, oh, mm. it's a blue moon tonight, I'm lucky. What would you add to the lucky charms? Uh, I can go first. Yes, please. Uh, ladybug. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a good one. I mean, well, me, well, you'd have to eat a bug, which Wait, I can... You you have to. Oh, I, I can see, see the optics of that being bad. Yeah, no, that's not great. Mm -hmm. The ladybug shaped marshmallows. Oh, <laughs> delicious. Magically delicious. Now they have the unicorn. Do they? Yeah, the unicorn oh, is a pretty you standard. Oh, have that bag of Lucky Charms marshmallows. I do, I do. Do you I, still have it? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, no, we got rid of it the other day, actually, because mm -hmm. it's old, old. Yeah. But uh, no, uh, General Mills sometimes sends us specialty cereals, and they send us just the marsh like three huge bags of just Lucky Charms marshmallows, which became Ollie's favorite thing for a while. Um, they're very satisfying to crunch on. They were on. really good. They're <laughs> really good. It's da they, they were <laughs> magically delicious, more like dangerously addicting. <laughs> That's um, their new motto. It's dangerously cheap. addicting? Uh -huh. Welcome to my life. All the addictions. I say that everyone should have one fun addiction. Fun addiction. Mm. You know, I, I like to say that mine is Diet Coke. Yeah. You know, so, and, and apparently Lucky Charms marshmallows. <laughs> So think about it. I'm gonna uh, come back to you with that question. What's your what's your fun addiction? I think I know uh, mine. Oh, what's yours, Ash? Sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. I mean, good for you. Well, no, Those I used are... to have a sweet potato every single day for breakfast. Do you really? Yeah. I put a sweet potato in the microwave and then put um, peanut butter on it, and that's my breakfast. Wow! When did that start? It was um, a little over like a year and a half ago, but my friend was like, "Hey, you gotta try this," and I was like, "Okay." Hey, so the sweet potato pusher. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you're gonna really like this stuff. This is this is the this is the business it right is, here. It is. And then you leave every single.
the morning like I already had a vegetable. Look it's, at me go. No, There's so, so much vitamin A going through my veins right now. Well, I was going to say, I mean, good for you, sweet potato, because like when it comes to food theory episodes, like the more we do food theory, the more I'm like, can you uh, can you eat anything in the world at this point without it causing some like catastrophe to your body? And sweet potato is actually like the one food that consistently consistently is like that's good for you yeah. and like this is full of good stuff and you know this is this is a winner so awesome you know <laughs> or you could fill your bowl with literal sugar marshmallows <laughs> and just consume that for breakfast <laughs> that's equivalent anyway here let's let's get this ending shall we we'll have right. plenty guess what we'll have plenty of time to talk while i redo these events over and over again <laughs> Rope has come to an end. The way down seems endless. No voices can be heard. Just the sound of your own breathing and the rain falling from above. It mixes with your sweat, making your hands uncomfortable. You decide to give up and climb back up. The task is much more difficult than lowering yourself down. The pain in your hands and the moisture in the area create a terrible combination. Oh, <gasps> no! You lose your grip and fall. Climbing ropes. It is hard. It is hard to climb a rope. Is this going to be the same death scream? Oh, poor Lily thinking about it oh there it is yep 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 that's brutal i think that's the time it takes for her to fall oh that's interesting yeah this is this is this is not pleasant especially the broken bones sticking out of her leg it's not great it's, i mean it's i didn't expect this game to be nearly as like uh brutal it's it, like they, they show you her death uh eight is our first number so eight two blank 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 i think three was second or third from the last there Rocks can be placed back in the same area where they're found if the speed penalty is too much. Rocks can be placed back in... Oh, yeah, that's fine. Or they can be placed in the river. Let's get the intro. Yes. So that was level two. We slipped and fell. I'm going to take our knitting needles again. Matt, what's your fun addiction while I get us back to where we were? Slaying. Slaying? Slaying? Did you, did you say slaying? <laughs> Like, I regret saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Here, real quick, let's check this out too. We're gonna we're gonna address this. Two flowers are growing together. Look at this; makes your palms sweat for some reason. Yeah, that's because of how we died. You don't really want to be around this plant. Yeah. Okay. So these are all death plants. They don't actually affect how we how we descend. Um, so slaying is the answer that Matt has come up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you, do you slay on a regular basis? Um, yeah, I would say so. Okay. I mean, what do you think? That you slay on a regular <laughs> do, basis? Do I slay? E e every day. Every day you come in, I'm like, there, there's See, the guy who slays. I can't stop slaying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're saying slay? Oh, I was thinking like slaying, like you ride in on your on we, your Santa's. We've like, already done this bit. I know we've done this bit, but but Ash is new, yeah. so Ash has not heard this bit. This is this is this is delightful. Also, as your right hand human now, I can I can hear you. You do slay. Thank all you. The time. <laughs> Thank all you. All the time, yes. Matt. <laughs> all the time. Okay, Matt. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, stop! 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 It's uh, <laughs> amazing. Cut it and use it as a rope. There we go. We took the net. Um. Yeah, Matt. I would say that is a, a fair assessment of you. On a day-to-day -day basis. It's a blessing and a curse. I understand. It's hard to slay Same like this. Same, I know, right? <laughs> like me. It's hard to be so amazing all the time. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough. It's hard knock life for us. <laughs> In the words of Annie. Uh, okay, let's use cheers. Cut this. Do you like Annie? Do I like Annie? The no. Musical? I'm not I'm not a big fan of the musical. Yeah. I think I think Stephanie loves it. Or like it was one that she watched a lot growing up. I am not a fan of Annie. Uh, I think some of the songs are good, obviously. I think the like narrative though is kind of yeah, it's kind of kind of dull. Yeah, and I feel like most of the theater people in my life like actively don't like that musical. Yeah, theater people in general though don't like anything. Like mm. really, at this point, theater people are critical of like everything. <laughs> yeah, like like every like humanity at this point, <laughs> critical of everything. You know, for a while they liked Hamilton, but now they really don't like Hamilton because yeah. it became too popular. For a while they really loved Evan Hansen, and then Evan Hansen, even before the movie kind of fell out of pop, they're like, oh, this was a toxic show. Like, at this point it's really, for when I was growing up, everyone loved Rent. I didn't like Rent because mm. I'm like, there's so many better musicals. But 
but then there was a huge turn against Rent. So musical theater people are finicky. And at this point, I don't even know what shows generally people are like, yeah, that was a good show. Um, I think Hades Town is pretty well received. I hate Hades Town. <gasps> I know it's a hot take. What? I know it's a very hot take. And I know that by saying that I've angered a lot of people online. I think I saw it when it toured recent, like literally a month ago. And I, I don't see what everyone loves about it. I think it's a very poorly constructed show. I think it is from a, from a narrative. Here's the thing. I appreciate some of the stuff that it's doing and I appreciate some of the music. But I think from a narrative standpoint and from a directorial standpoint, there are so many missed opportunities and poor decisions about the structure of that show. I could go on a rant about Hades Town. Ash has their hand over their their mouth. I know. In in shock and awe. I oh, wow. have have I hurt you? I'm sorry. I might cry. Oh no, I don't mean to make you cry. It's and okay. and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I like I said, I am never I never want to be that person to stomp on the appreciation or love of things that people like. Absolutely not. 100% not. As a theater person though, and and as someone who grew up and directed a lot of shows, acted in a lot of shows, worked at a lot of theaters, and and knows a lot of musical theater, there's a lot of really glaring flaws in that show that I can't get past. We'll talk. Okay. I, I, I don't want to attack you. Okay. And, I, and I don't oh, no, mean to I'm attack not, you. I am not being attacked. No, no, I please. I am just very surprised at this opinion. Yeah, I and I know it's a very hot take because I know every... You're, you're told when you brought up Hades Town, you're, I'm like, oh yeah, that is the show that everyone really likes right now. I, I, oh, here, next playthrough. Okay, okay. Let, We'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> the rope has come to an end. The way down seems endless. Eh? A nearby lamp turned on by itself. Such a thing could be helpful right now. You reach over to take the light off the oh, Willy. Climbing down ropes is hard. A terrible decision, really. That, that was, that was dumb, Lily. She's gonna have a broken leg. Hey, I almost got it. I was close. <laughs> womp, 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 dead end. Okay, phone number. Phone number. There, three. Okay. Last number. Um, it is worth noting. Yes. Uh, the, the fact that you can't take the lamp is interesting. Because further down, right, aren't some of the levels, like, dark? If I remember correctly. Were they? Maybe. I feel like yes. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. Maybe maybe when we go to like levels four and below, like if we reach for it, we can grab it and still go down. Mm. That's interesting. All normal items in the stuff menu need to be found in order to get to the bottom of the well. All normal items in the stuff menu need to be found in order to get to the bottom of the well, except for one. That's interesting. Okay. So... Let's talk Hades Town. Do you want to talk Hades? We don't have to. I don't know. We we might need to. I feel like. I, I feel like I feel like at some point. Yes. I feel like me just tossing it out there. There's there's this uh, channel that I really like called uh, Schaeferless Productions, um, and he does. Oh, here we go. Here's three. <laughs> three flowers are growing here. The flowers seem to be reaching for the lamp near the house. Haha. <laughs> that's because I. That's how I died. <laughs> Uh, you don't really want to be around the plants. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> there's a channel I, I like called Shaferless Productions, and he uh, does, every once in a while, he does a lot of, like, animated movie reviews and stuff like that, but he also does musical theater stuff. Um, also absolutely loves Hades Town. Did a whole long dissertation about Hades Town and how good it was and this and that. Um, everyone's <laughs> ranking it as, like, their S rank. You know, I watched a... We're gonna rank a bunch of musicals, and and Hades Town is on on S rank for a lot of people and stuff like that. It's 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 up there. Yeah. Um. So, again, I get it, but also, I, I got I got I got issues. He's got issues. Have you listened to the album? I, I don't have strong opinion. The... I don't have a, I don't have strong opinions about things, but okay. Hades Town, one of those things so, that I have strong now, opinions here's about. Here's what I know about you now. You have strong opinions about RuPaul's Drag Race, uh -huh. watercolors. And Hades Town the Musical. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. That was a weird sound. Was it weird? Um. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think guess. it was just the game, but it was like, whoa. Um. But have you listened to the album set um of Hades Town before the Broadway soundtrack? 
Because no. it started off as like an indie album. Oh, interesting. No, I, I have not heard. I just, my, and again, my only familiarity with it is I've listened to the, the cast recording, the, you know, the, the most recently released cast recording, as well as, uh, you know, seeing the show. Yeah. The, like, the, and, and the sh when I say the show, I've seen the touring production, but it is the Broadway tour, so it, it should be staged pretty darn close to what it was originally presented as. Yeah. Um, and the cast was great. Like, I, I think the cast was great. I thought they were super talented. Um... All of that. I will say, um, the Orpheus before um, Broadway Orpheus yeah. has a very special place in my heart. Yeah. He brings so much emotion to the original one. Mm. Or, or, mm. Orpheus. And, and again, like, the performers are great, and a lot of the songs are really good. I think from a constructing a musical standpoint mm -hmm. is actually one of my biggest issues. So here we go. Rope has come to an end, the way down seems endless, but there seems to be another tunnel you can reach. Perhaps this is where the voice was coming from. It was not. We, we, we know for a fact that it's at the 15th level, but sure. Ooh, hello. Oh, wow. Oh man, what's gonna jump out and kill us? I'm just waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Wait, did we escape? Oh, did we escape alive? You can see the lake outside. There's no way we're leaving. Alive. You are suspended high in the air looking down upon it. <clears throat> the weather is causing waves to crash violently against the rocky shores below. You can even see some- OH NO! <laughs> oh man! Your body is washed out of the drainage pipes into the lake. Before hitting the water, your face makes direct content with the rocks below. Oh no! Oh jeez. Oh, and I even got tangled up in vines. Oh! <gasps> Oh, 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 this is awful. Oh, Lily. Oh, that was terrible. Not even Papa would recognize you now. Oh, no. Oh, that was so sad. Dead end. Oh, this is terrible. Gee whiz. Is there any way to beat this without her having to die a horrific death over and over and over and over again? Because that would be great. Second number is zero. All right, so we have the first three digits of the phone number. What's the area code? 802. Ooh, 802. Mm -hmm. Is that an area code for... Let's look up where that's an area code for. Lore! Where is this taking place? If a bad rope material is picked up, it'll automatically be used. The state of Vermont. I'm just sending one. Really? Uh-huh. They live in Vermont. There you go. Nice. Sick lore reveals. Okay. So... My, okay, so I think my problem, well, there's, there's a couple things. <laughs> okay. So first off, I think the, I think they, it depends, there, there's a lot. And it depends on kind of where we want to start with it all. Um, here's four. Four flowers are growing here together. The rain is drowning the flowers. Um, from a, so one of the biggest ones that came out of nowhere uh, is the end of... It, I think it's a show that tries to do too much with what it has. Um, in terms of... You're already telling the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Yep. You are... Which is a great story. Classic Greek myth. I think... I've, I, the, actually, uh, Orpheus and Eurydice, the opera, is fantastic. Uh, I think it's very compelling. It, it, it's a built-in, really solid narrative. The Sour Rule play is really good, too. What's that? The Sarah Rule play? Yeah. Eurydice? Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. I, I, it, it is such a classic myth, and it's a classic myth for a reason, because it's so compelling. Yeah. Um, so from a fundamental story standpoint, great, mm -hmm. awesome. But then on top of that, you layer on the New Orleans aesthetic with the band on stage and this and that. Right. Fine. You can to That's totally cool. But then you end act one with this weird... Suddenly it pivots to, like, Hades is... A reference to Trump era politics? Spoilers. Which comes out of <laughs> nowhere and also the. Yeah, spoiler. But like, yes, I guess. But uh, <laughs> it, it took me as a shock where it's like, it is not set up in the slightest. It comes out of nowhere. And the, the way it's talked about where. We're gonna build a wall to keep people out of Hades or keep them in Hades. Like, it doesn't work as a metaphor. Like, I get why you might want to do that. And like, here's a wall and I'm Hades and I'm you. But like, it doesn't 
makes sense in the context of the show. And so first off, that was just like a huge whiplash. Nothing ever comes of it. Mm -hmm. and, and so they're just like, this is a musical happening in the Trump era. And as artists, we have something to say about that. Fine, but it didn't work from a narrative standpoint. And so th that, okay. that threw me off in a lot of ways. And then there's other stuff too, like having the band on stage. I like it, but what is it telling me for the, the, direct, the direction of the show? Like it wasn't utilized in a way that like helped build the world of this, of this stage environment that it's made. And as a result, it just made everything feel crowded. Like it was visually busy. And as a result, like, I felt like all the action had to be like really crammed into kind of like downstage center rather than using the levels and using kind of the, the wings of the stage because so much of it was cut off by the band. And then lastly, and I think this is again, like one of the, the, the big moments is the moment where he turns and looks at Eurydice and basically sends her back to Hades for return and like that, that lost moment, mm -hmm. it, it, the climax, like that is, that is the moment and you lose it because directorially it wasn't staged in a way that built to that moment, featured it, center stage, turns, and she's gone. Like, I almost lost that moment because there's so many other things happening on stage. And it happened, like, what was it, downstage, downstage left, I think it was, or something like that. And he's on some steps. And it was just, yeah, like, yeah. a very strange staging of it where... I almost missed him looking back because there's so much other stuff going on and at no point was my focus drawn to that like huge pivotal turn. I look at her and I lose her. And, and uh, uh, like it was a lot of small stuff mm -hmm. fundamentally wrapped in this story that I think was very excited about pretty music but lost a lot of the key narrative beats that I needed to understand these relationships. I... I saw so much potential mm -hmm. in the story that was being told and the characters that were being drawn and the music that was being composed. And there were good ideas there. I didn't love the execution of it. Interesting. And so it was one of the... So for me, it ended up being like, and again, hot take, it ended up being like a <laughs> C-tier musical that had really great potential, but I think ultimately was let down by, by the book and just the dramatic execution of it. <laughs> Sorry, that's... That's me, and you know, and what's your favorite episode of GT Live? Oh yeah, the one where we talk about Hades Town for a really long time. <laughs> I, I <laughs> here's the thing. I had to stop going to the like when I stopped doing theater professionally. Yeah. I had to, um, I had to stop going to theater for a while mm -hmm. because I couldn't enjoy shows. Really. I was so critical, like of the decisions that were being made of like every show that I was seeing that I needed to take a break. Yeah. And Actually, I relate to that a lot. Yeah, do you? Yeah. I mean, I went to theater school for four years. Yeah. So. Uh, right, <laughs> that'll do it. And and after directing and, and all this stuff, like, it was hard for me to not see the mistakes. And, and at this point, I'm able to go and enjoy things and, and watch them, but also look at look at them and think of them critically. And so on one hand, I'm like, this is great. But on the other hand, I'm like, but, but it could have been so much better. Could have better. been better. Yeah. yeah. And that was, that was, and to see everyone so overwhelmingly praise it, I was, I was surprised actually by really? how un, uh, unadjusted, un, un, what's the word I'm looking for? Untainted? No, not untainted. <laughs> like, uncritical, the, like, it was just like praise and praise and it's, it's just great, you know, and I was Without, surprised. Without, like, critique or like yeah feedback. like i haven't seen a lot of people actually discussing the finer points of it so i've been mm. surprised by that uh okay so wait how many ropes do i have one two three four five and we are at one two three what, what, one two four five right there sorry i got distracted by hades town <laughs> sorry and and again let me reiterate yes that this is me and my interpretation coming out of it and, and it's from a like place of love I, I, I love theater. I love the medium of theater. I love the art of theater. I love the storytelling potential of theater. And I think a lot of shows miss the mark or like could have done just slightly better. Yeah. Um, and like, hey, if you love the show, great. You know, I, I love shows that are generally people do not enjoy. Um, you know, like everyone has their own tastes in the art. So 100% don't want to like rain on anyone's parade or anything like that. That was just like my viewpoint coming out of it. Uh, it's come to an end, but a darkened window 
juts out from the side of the wall, well's wall. It's slightly open, you swing closer to take a peek. But you overshoot it and tumble into a pitch black room. It seems like you landed on something soft. You try to feel around to get a sense of your surroundings. <gasps> oh, weird. Whoa. Lily? Papa! Where? I thought... Shh, it's okay, Lily. You just had a bad dream. No, you went to work and there was a voice. A voice? What kind of voice? Uh, it came from the well. Oh, the well. I hope you didn't go near it. The voice sounded like she was in trouble. I wanted to save her. Now, Lily... Even in a dream, you need to remember what Papa tells you. But you weren't there. Lily? Good girls listen to Papa even when he isn't home. Especially when you hear voices from outside. That's how bad little girls get kidnapped or eaten. See, this is, this is me growing This is me waking up. There are voices down in the kitchen. Well? Will you remember that, Lily? Yes, Papa. Will you? Will you remember it down to your soul? Yes, Papa. Good girl. Good night, Lily. Good night, Papa. Under Papa's watch, you quietly go to sleep. His words ring through your head as you lose consciousness. His words ring through your head as you lose consciousness. Hmm. <gasps> no! Okay, so apparently <laughs> my reaction and Ash's reaction were so strong to that moment <laughs> that we peaked the audio so bad, we had to reset all the audio equipment, so that's why we had to, to make a cut there. But, oh my gosh, I did not, I did not see that coming. I'm like, well, is she going to die? Is this one just like, a, I, I didn't think it was a good ending, but I'm like, I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, that was so intense. Ash, this is your first like scary game with us, huh? Yeah. So, oh my God. This, is, this is an intense one. Oh my God, I did not, oh, Papa, why? Right? For the reason of why. Right, I, I, we got to keep solving the lore to find out. Oh. That was so intense. Oh God. Wow. That was crazy. And you got the phone number? Yes. Okay. So uh, some puzzles have more than one solution. This can lead to different paths. Okay. So we have one more to get, and then we've gotten the first seven endings. So we're doing pretty good, I'd say, for like collecting all of this stuff. How are we on the phone number stuff? Um, we currently have 802-4XXX3X3. X3X3. Okay. Cool. All right. You search, found knitting needles. Take them. Also, needles. random question. Yes. Can you look anywhere else under the couch? Uh, let me check. I, maybe? Let's try. I'm assuming you're asking that for in, intense. Like, you have, a, you have a rationale. So let's see if I go over here. Just because, like, the pantry, you could go in different spots and you find different foods. Okay, let's look. In your search, you found an old... Ah! You knew. You knew, Ash. In your search, you found an old charger for something you can't remember. It's very old with the wire being exposed in some places, but it's long enough to be used as a possible rope. Take the charger as a rope? The wire is exposed. It's very old. They exp expressly tell us this. I'm not gonna take it yet. Let's leave the charger there for now. Couch sits with nobody on it. Is there a different, nothing here but dust money is, oh yeah, so there's four different sections. Okay. Good to take. Nothing here but dust bunnies. Okay, so so it's knitting needles and charger. Sure, let's try. Let's try the charger. Why not? You took the stray charger. Sure, why not? Um, okay. So Ash. Yes. While let me look at the the five <laughs> the five here. Five flowers are growing here together. It looks like someone crushed the flowers. Huh. That's interesting. Oh. All right. So. I would love to have your take. So, you heard mine, you know, and this is founded off of me <laughs> listening to the music a couple times, seeing the show once, yeah. like a month ago, and trying to remember as best I can. I'd love to actually have your your take on it. So, yeah. so what do you like about it, or, or kind of what, what's your thought? I mean, I think I'm a little bit biased because I was there for a little bit more of the development of it. Interesting. The first um, soundtrack, it wasn't the on-Broadway one. Uh-huh. Um, I forget where they did that album. It might have been London. Okay. Um, but 
I guess mm. I was more familiar with like the process development of it. Interesting. And that's why I was really curious about your perception of it because you were focused more on the music, but then the actual like bringing to the stage mm -hmm. felt short for you. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's just because maybe subconsciously you were like, wow, this clearly started as music. And then they just built it around like, how do we put this on the stage? Mm -hmm. um, but it started as like an indie album, I think in like 2010. Yeah. Um, how did you, how did you come across it? Just yeah i mean through just, like musical theater like circles and, and yeah. following the space when i mean when you go to art high school you have a lot of people talking about a lot of things sure so i wanted to be a little cool kid yeah of course um and i found the album on spotify no i i get it when i was i mean <laughs> i have that's laughing at me that's so funny that being a cool kid at your high school was finding an indie like <laughs> theater album about that's ancient awesome. greek myth that's awesome yeah. that's i love so it so funny that's great <laughs> I oh man if you if you're if if you want to be cool kid I have some deep cuts from like old like because when Ooh. I was again when I was in theater I collected as much as many like random cast recordings as I could in an effort to just be inspired listen to new songs whatever mm -hmm. so like I got some really obscure stuff like uh, I think it's one of the most obscure ones I have is like EFX which is the VFX musical or whatever which largely terrible um the whole thing is like a, a sticks show turned into like a musical theater performance oh, but there's like God. but the opening song is a banger what? like you know <laughs> efx it's, it's great it's EFX. so cool yeah I, it's, huh. I have a i have a huge it's somewhere i'd have to find it uh but it's a huge stockpile of just cds and cds and cds which were things that held music back in the day before spotify wow. uh but so you'd have to find a way to play them but Amazing. i have a, and i would just go down the list and i would order them all from the library and and the cleveland library system was really robust and really good at getting you stuff and so i would get them from all corners and i just this was the day of like ripping cds and so i would just like download the music download the music download the music it's great so <laughs> love it that's cool. That is really interesting, though, that you were there from, like, inception or, like, yeah. early days into kind of, like... I remember when it got announced that it was going to Broadway. Yeah. And, like, me and my friends were all freaking out. We were so excited um, because, like... Ooh, dot, dot, dot. Ooh. Your rope is creaking. Oh. Oh, this is new. So everything we've used so far is good. Something is very... Ha! Oh, no! Straight, good one, Ash. Yeah, check out the straight charger. <laughs> yeah, check out the couch. All right, so that one uh, did not work. Well, clearly. hey, at least you didn't get electrocuted. Yeah, now we know that there's well, a straight I mean, charger. I guess it maybe wasn't there's... plugged into a power source, so that wouldn't happen. But I wonder if there's like duct tape or something we can use to strengthen it. As you fell, you were lucky to land head first, killing you instantly. <laughs> Your body oh, lays in a contorted lovely. and unnatural state as it waits for the maggots to settle in. Sweet. Well, we haven't seen that death, so that was a new death. The 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 bad all <laughs> bad craftsmanship <laughs> ending. <laughs> wow, they did not they did not beat around the bush with that one. They're like, nope, you you failed. All right, bad so choices were made. Yeah, bad bad decisions were made. So clearly, the, I didn't spend long enough in art school. Clearly, clearly, that's it. Uh, here we go. Matt, what about you? Hey, what? You, you've been you've been quiet this time. I, I don't have a dog in this race. Yeah, y'all. I'm not a theater person. Right. That's that's interesting. Is it just never been exposed to it, or not interested, or have you tried a theater um, and you're like, no thanks. I think. That, have you tried theater? <laughs> we've talked about this before. Um, as a the, film well, bro. Well, thanks. Thanks for reminding everyone that we're recycling conversations. Ash is here now. Well, so. no, we've no, What's we've that? talked about this off camera. They haven't heard this. Okay. Um, well, there you go. Because we talk off camera. Like, what? Yeah, I know. Wait, there, there's conversations that happen <laughs> that aren't utilized as content? I know. Get out of here. Hard to believe. I know. It's, it's pretty unbelievable. Um, as a film bro for a long time, yeah. I thought theater was cringy and corny. Yep. Um, and did my best to distance myself from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I grew up and I was like, no, they sing silly songs and put on costumes and it's really fun. Yeah. It is very fun. It is. It's pretty awesome. Um, so it's, I, I've, I've changed my, my frame of thinking. Yeah. I just don't have much exposure to it. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I, I like Book of Mormon. Great. Book okay. of Mormon yep. is cool. Yes. Uh -huh. Good choice. Um, Hairspray. Great musical. Book of Mormon is one of those that has kind of fluctuated. I, I know people are kind of hit and miss on it nowadays and yeah. I don't know how it has aged in 2022 right because mm. it i mean it is 
very much built to be as offensive as possible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a good show, though. It's great. I, I mean, I haven't watched it in a long time, but, like, yeah. it's it's solid. Music uh, solid. Book Andrew solid. Andrew Rannell's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, Book of Mormon. I, that was actually uh, in a completely fortunate coincidence. Uh, it was the last show that I saw before I moved out of New York. Uh, oh, we, no. Yeah, we um, went... We went and did a lottery for the tickets. We, Steph and I were super poor, you know, in New York, sharing our Chipotle burritos for the, the big weekly dinner. And everything else was literally frozen peas and pasta. And we're like, you know what? We're leaving New York. Let's try to go. We tried to go see shows as much as possible on lottery where you're getting like $15 student tickets and things like that. And um, we put in for the lottery for Book of Mormon. It was like round the block. I mean, this was in its height, you know, just massive. And like the fates smiled upon us and we got, we got the tickets and it was awesome. We were like, and also it was like good student. It was like good $15 tickets where it was like front and center almost. Like Whoa. we were really Whoa. close to the stage. Um, so we got some really awesome stuff there. That's cool. Yeah, it was cool. So that was very memorable for a lot of reasons. Did you see the OG cast? Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were very, like I said, very, very fortunate to, yeah. to do that one. So cool. Such a great show. M music's awesome. Okay, what else? I love the Hairspray movie musical. Oh, Hairspray. Yeah, Hairs mm -hmm. Hairspray is solid. Hairspray's yeah. great. Hairspray is solid mm -hmm. across the board. Uh, stage and... The, the movie's pretty good. I like the movie I, the a lot. The movie's it holds really up. good, honestly. It holds up real well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amanda Bynes? <laughs> yeah, that's on. right. Uh -huh. Yes. The only, the only... My only... The only thing I didn't love was John Travolta. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> hard to watch. I, yeah, I don't... <laughs> And it's such a great role, and but I don't know why they did that. I think, and here's the thing, John Waters knows what he's doing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. casting John Travolta as Tracy Turnblad is so camp. Uh, Edna, I believe, oh, is Edna, Edna Turnblad, Edna. but that's fine. I'm so sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> that's high camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is true. That is true. It is It is campiness to the to the extreme. Although, um, what's, it, what's his face? Harvey. Uh, Harvey, I can't think of his original name. No, no one. No one's saving me on this one. Nope. I have Harvey, I don't know what you're talking about. Harvey Firestein. Harvey Firestein. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like, uh, it, all, it always hurts my soul a little bit when, like, the original, like, yeah. the originators of the roles. Was not considered. Are, and maybe 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 he was considered. I don't know. Maybe yeah. they were considered. I'm not sure. But it always hurts me when I'm like, oh, why did you pick, cast this famous actor X rather than, you know, the person who, like, originated this role and just crushed it, you yeah. know? So... Because I like, I'm a big Harvey Firestein fan, mm. uh, even though I couldn't remember the name just now. Rope has come to an end, but there seems to be a large room here. Ooh, what a strange room! It is indeed. There looks to be a dead body in the corner. You look closer at the unknown pile in the corner. Is it me? Dun dun dun. Oh. Oh, the maggots. That's all. You wait while the maggots set in. It is a corpse covered in maggots. Do you know what maggots are, Lily? <laughs> You've learned about them before. They are baby flies that eat dead... Who's talking to her at I this point? I was about to ask the same thing. Right? Do you know what maggots are, Lily? Ah, thank you, narrator in my head. Because they seem a little bit, like, omnipotent, where they're just like, mm -hmm. yes, Lily doesn't know what Mexico is. <laughs> yeah, is that what the omnipotent narrator is saying in this moment? Lily did not know what Mexico well, was that day. Was that a thing in like the um like earlier? I don't rem I don't remember a Mexico reference. But I was gonna was... say I don't think Mexico's been referenced at any point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I hope. <laughs> like Hades Town coming out of nowhere with the Mexico references. You're like what? Where's this? Well, I, thought I thought we were watching Orpheus and Eurydice. Now we're talking about Mexico and walls. What? Well, I thought it was like, oh, fun fact. This pertains to this country. Also, fun fact. Lily doesn't know what that is. <laughs> Mexico. Uh, maggots. Mexico. Now what? Oh, well, now I feel silly. No. no you, yeah, welcome. Welcome to GT Live. <laughs> kind of your job right i was gonna say if, if if that's only happening once a week congratulations you're you're making out okay uh you no longer hear the sound of rain but it's now pitch black someone must have covered the well well now even though you can't see you may want to get comfortable with the maggots they may be your only company for a while oh that was kind of a that was kind of a peaceful ending that wasn't brutally violent and horrific towards our small little child I think that's a win. Dead end, but slow dead end. Two. Two. 
Getting closer. Okay. Skip the intro. Yeah. So how are we doing time-wise? At this point, we have gotten six additional canon endings plus like an, a bonus death ending that we haven't seen, bringing us to the seven that we got that first gameplay. I think it's a decent place to wrap. Right? I was going to say, that feels pretty complete. We got a lot of endings. I made a lot of people mad with my thoughts on Hadestown. I'm sorry. Again, <laughs> I don't mean to attack your favorite show. I'm not attacking. I'm just critically analyzing because that's what I do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I feel like this was good. Ash feels silly now with her Mexico talk. So I think, I think across correct. the board. I think I'm correct. I, well, I also just looked it up on Google and apparently someone on Reddit said I was right. Well, not that I was right specifically, but that something happened. <laughs> That's crazy that they know it in advance. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you do realize that GT Live is not currently live. Like, I, I started, G welcome to GT Not Live. So, what time loop do you exist in, Ash? I don't know. That's Ashley. For you, Matt. I know, that's what it is. It's all part of the lore. Ash lives in a time loop. Do you live in a time loop too, Matt, or no? Is it just, is it just Ash? That's for you to find out. Oh, lore! Tune in next time to find out more about what happens to Lily and whether Ash and Matt live in a time loop. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below your favorite musical and any musicals that you recommend to Ash or Matt. Checking out Deep Cuts for Ash and for Matt, you know, send him Oklahoma or something. <laughs> Don't send him Oklahoma. I uh, personally recommend Falsettos. Oh, good show. Oh, that is a good deep cut. Nice. Mm. Falsettos. I'm always a big fan of uh, Wild Party, mm. both Lippa and Lacusa, though Lippa is, is definitely the better of the two. Do a Lippa? <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> Full Monty, also a, a personal fave of mine, mm -hmm. and Reefer Madness. Reefer um, Madness. Fantastic. Have you never seen? No. Oh, you and I are going to have a movie night. Yay! Yes. Uh, we'll fire up We'll fire up the theater and we'll watch Reefer Madness. Oh, I'm absolutely down. I, I, it is a show that I make everyone that I care about watch. Oh, thank I, you. I would offer it to Matt, but I know that he's not into musical theater, so... I also, if I can't get Matt to watch, like, Lord of the Rings with me, he's not going to watch it. Actually, I could see you actually watching Reefer Madness more. I might. I was going to say, you might, might actually do that one. All right, anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, at some point in the future, Ash and Matt will have their thoughts on Reefer Madness. We'll see you in the next video. And remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it, was, it wasn't a live stream. It was a time loop. But hey, it was a video, a video for you. Thanks for watching.